Good morning. I've brought us outside today because it's such a beautiful day. Um, and I thought actually as so many of us are in lockdown and many cannot enjoy uh, being out in the fresh open air because of lockdown, I thought I'd give you some of the delights of Cambridgeshire where this particular morning reflection and meditation is coming from. Uh, so welcome uh, to the delights of my back garden and also the sounds that you're going to hear around. Some uh, will be perfectly fine, which is the beauty of the birdsong. Um, the movement of the horses in my neighbour's farmyard. The sound of the hens who are waking up this morning and laying their fresh eggs and the occasional car coming past. Um, if uh, my postman happens to arrive as a key worker, let's celebrate the fact that we've got key workers carrying on in the midst of this worldwide challenge to try and create some sort of safety net for us all in the middle of a pandemic that at present is uncontrolled in terms of us having a cure. All we can do is manage ourselves to uh, respond to this challenge and thank God for cooperation, for courage of those who are key workers, particularly in the health services who are at the front line of protecting lives. So here's our morning reflection today. Let's still ourselves and give thanks. Welcome everyone and particularly welcome from new uh, participants uh, coming in from the Philippines and we look forward to your contributions in the in the days to come. Let us open our lips and our mouths shall declare your praise. Let us worship God. All praise to the divine name. Have mercy on me, O God, in your enduring goodness, according to the fullness of your compassion. Forgive me my offences. Wash each one of us thoroughly and cleanse us from all sin, for we acknowledge our failures and our rebellion against you. When I sin against my neighbour, it is only you who I have sinned against. It is evil in your eyes and against your purpose of goodness. To all. You desire truth in the inward parts, so teach us wisdom in the secret places of our hearts. Purge us with hyssop, and we shall be clean. Wash us, and we shall be whiter than the snow that falls in winter. 
make us hear joy and gladness. Let the bones which you have broken rejoice. Don't hide your face from us, Lord. Create in us clean hearts, renew right spirits within us. Give me the gladness of your help in these times of trouble. Support me, help me to support others. Do not take your Holy Spirit from us. Bring a willing spirit and a courageous heart to us. Lord God, you are our salvation. Deliver us from the jaws of death so our tongue shall sing of your righteousness and our feet can dance and follow the great Lord of the dance. So in your mercy hear us. Amen. Welcome to you who are just joining us. Um, I'm trying a, a broadcast from the outside today because so many are in lockdown that it's good to be able to celebrate with the birds that we're hearing now as the crush of traffic is silenced and our business is, uh, is brought to a quieter place. So the birds and the whole of nature sings and we can hear them. The reading today as we continue our walk with Jesus to Jerusalem uh, is going to uh, bring us into the Garden of Gethsemane um, where Jesus brought his disciples to come and pray just as we are spending time in prayer and meditation and reflection in these days of Holy Week. And so I'm going to read um, a small section from Matthew chapter 26, verses 30 to 31. Do follow along if you've got your Bibles there. If not, just listen and reflect with me on what we learn here of Jesus' time, considering the challenges and the extreme challenge he has to face of going before the Sanhedrin and before the Roman authorities. When they had sung a hymn, the disciples and Jesus went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, Each one of you will fall away because of me this night, for it's written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. And Peter said to him, Though all will fall away, I am not going to fall away. I will never fall away. And Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you, this very night, before the cock crows, you are going to deny me three times. Peter said, Even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all of the disciples. And Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said, Sit here. I'm going to pray. And he took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and he became very sorrowful and troubled. And he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even unto death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little further, he fell on his face and he prayed, My father, if it is possible, 
Let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and he found each one of them sleeping. And he said, Peter, could you not watch with me for even one hour? Watch and pray that you do not enter into temptation because your spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak. He went away and he prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. And he came and he found them sleeping, their eyes were heavy, and leaving them again sleeping. He went away and prayed for the third time, and he said, Father, if this cannot pass, I will drink it, your will be done. And he came to his disciples and he said, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand. The Son of Man will be betrayed into the hand of sinners. Rise, let's be going, for my betrayer is at hand. Story of our human frailty as Jesus faces his destiny, his final confrontation with the powers that all of his actions upending the power structures of this world, confronting privilege, confronting our easy hierarchies, that exclude and denigrate and think that the wealth of this world impresses in any way the divine who is the great I am, the I am who exists before all things and exists in all things, that are easy hierarchies of privilege and exclusion impresses God. Jesus is confronting these as he comes to Jerusalem. All that our religious orthodoxy, our religious structures, our cults of what is good and what is bad, our rules and our regulations that protect us from engaging with the fullness of life, with the cries of all humanity for life, is of any interest to God. This he confronts as he comes to Jerusalem and he says to his disciples, can you come aside and pray with me because I am entering into a great conflict. And Peter says, I will never betray you. I will be with you to the end. And we know how that ends up. And Jesus recognises that our spirits are willing, but our flesh is so often weak, they could not even spend half hour with Jesus, let alone an hour awake. And here we are in our half hour of attending To the divine presence in our lives, in history, throughout time, as we are in these extraordinary COVID times, a very short glimpse in history, a blip in our history, and yet one in which we are so increasingly aware of our need 
for help, for hope, for being committed to the health of one another. This is why we are locked down, because we want to protect not only ourselves, but the lives of those most vulnerable in our communities. What a lesson for us to take from the Divine Teacher who went to Jerusalem because he was going to confront, finally, our topsy-turvy world, our wrong-headed systems, where the powerful, the wealthy, the privileged, the super-educated are the ones who win, and the others are left to lose. So today, as we gather together as a international community here, let's pray for those who are most vulnerable at this time and commit our lives afresh today to being those who follow the one who went to Jerusalem, who prayed in Gethsemane. Father, May this cup of suffering pass, but your will be done. Your will be done. Father God, you are a mother to us. You embrace us as your children. We pray for your holy protection for all those who are most vulnerable at this time. We pray for those who have reached into our household here from India. Praying for those who have nowhere to call home, nowhere to be safely locked down. Over a million migrant workers homeless, vulnerable, in need of food, in need of shelter, in need of protection. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Please put your prayers into the comment box. Then we can all join with Amen. There will be those you're specifically praying for at this time that we are accompanying in prayer, those in hospital. We pray for wisdom for our leaders that this time of COVID may be teaching new lessons to those in leadership. Here in Britain we pray for our present government that they may be humbled in the presence of COVID raging amongst us connecting our worlds in new ways. We pray for our Prime Minister Boris Johnson as he's in hospital thanking God for a health service ready and prepared to put themselves on the front line to care for those in intensive care. Give them wisdom give them the resources. Help us to learn the lessons here of those who are most important, those who can protect health, our physical health, our mental health, our spiritual health. 
as we go through these times. Help us to learn the lessons of these times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And let's pray for all those who are currently pregnant with new life. Those who are carrying the next generation at this time. A time that in normal times, for most of us, is a time of huge expectation and joy and now has become a worrying time a surround in prayer wherever they are in a refugee camp in Greece in a midwifery unit in the Philippines, seeking health access in New Orleans or in Margate, Mumbai, Melbourne. wherever new life is coming protect our young mothers Lord wrap them around with your care draw those who can assist and keep them safe through their time of birthing and bring new life safely to an earth which will recover from this pandemic but stronger with newer life with understanding with compassion Lord in your mercy hear our prayer as we come to the end of our reflection today it's been lovely having you outside here with me in the in the garden the bird song i'm just going to pray uh, with um nicholas lee's book um a prayer for the grace of living and tomorrow you will be being led in meditation by bishop Joanna of St. David's in Wales, who brings a reflection on Monday, Thursday, tomorrow, 9.30. And we'll also be placing here on the pages some complins which have been brought together by the Reverend Sandra Sykes. And thank you so much, Sandra, for sharing these. And if you have contributions for the page of Worship Meditation, from wherever you are, please just send them across to us and uh, we will get them placed on the page for people to be able to appreciate, meditate, reflect with you on. Graces. At the end of each acclamation we go, thanks be. For the grace of living for the grace of savouring, for the grace of God in our lives, at our table, in our bodies. Thanks be. Thanks be. For the candle that gives light, for the rose that gives us its perfume, for the hands that have laboured in any way to bring this food to our tables. For the friends who share fellowship with us, even though we are apart.
apart. We are socially together. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. So, whoever plucked these fruits, may they be blessed. Whoever sorted and cleaned, packaged and prepared the food coming to our tables, thanks be, thanks be, may they be blessed. Whoever chopped or mashed, sautéed or pureed, whipped, beat, folded, fried, baked, this food, may they be blessed for those who carried it to our homes and our houses and into our hands. May they be blessed. And may we too be blessed today. May you be blessed in whatever you are about today. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer,